Hello and welcome, everybody. This is your host, Ken D. Foster. Welcome to the Voices of Courage show. You know, as we do every week at this time, this show is a show that will surprise you. It is going to be a show that really expands your thinking, your possibilities, and mental wellness to Hmm, mental wellness. What's that? Well, you know, how you sleeping at night? You know, you're worrying, you're thinking, uh, you know, the other shoe's going to fall. You, you know, wondering if things are going to work out. Well, you know, if you are, it's not not exactly healthy, is it? Right? It's not, not healthy to, to play things over and over in your head, you know, expecting something to happen, right? It doesn't happen. Well, today I have an expert on my show. And he is going to, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about mental illness. We're going to be talking a little about his background. He's got a movie coming out this year. And he's uh, very uh, uh, well-versed human psychology and understanding how to uh, deal with difficult people. And if, uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, my guest going to be right here in just a minute. Listen, I've got to take a quick break. Before I do, I want to uh, give a shout out to some of my sponsors out there and uh, network uh, hosts. You know, we got BBS Radio is doing a great job for us out there. E360 TV, thank you so much. Flix TV, thank you so much. Uh, Roku, thank you so much. We got a lot of a lot of amazing people that are helping us to make this show right. And thank you, my team, for everything you do. Hey, well, welcome my special guest, uh, J. Paul Nadeau. Uh, Paul, welcome. Hey, thank you so much, Ken. It's really nice to be here. Yeah, it's really good uh, to have you on the show. You know, you and I met, uh, where did we meet? A clubhouse, I think, of all places. And uh, I listened to you talk on there. And I thought, man, i got to have this guy on my show. You've got a lot of information to share with people. Well, thank you. I so thought the same thing introduce- about you. Let me introduce you uh, formally. You know, <clears throat> Paul is a survivor of a severe physical and emotional abuse by his alcoholic fa- father. He experienced firsthand how to self-sabotage can immobilize a person and effectively uh, uh, cripple them. Suffer low self-esteem and depression at an early age, Paul experienced a moment in grade seven that turned his life around and led him to Conf- uh, confidently take control of his life. He's now a formal, a former EU detective, international peacekeeper, and is now an accomplished author, global motivational speaker, and mental health strategist who has made it his life's mission to guide others through the thoughts and experiences in their lives that hold them hostage, just as the thoughts once led him to feel host- uh, like a hostage. Paul, oh, so good. And I, I'm really, I'm really impressed. Uh, you know, when I heard you talk the uh, last few times, I was like, yeah, you know, your information needs to be out in the world. Um, let's just start in the beginning. You, you know, you're, you're in this abusive household, alcoholic. Uh, uh, how did that move uh, at that? Well, you know, Ken, it's, it's, I, I, my story is not unique. There are many people who are living in conditions surrounded by abuse, uh, perhaps from an alcoholic father uh, as mine, or whatever it is. But we we learn this helplessness. We 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 learn helplessness, and we don't understand that there's something very different out there because this is our circumstance. This happened to us for years, and as a result of the abuse, the physical abuse and the mental abuse, many people don't understand that there is something even greater for them outside and that they can change their environment simply by changing their attitude. And this is what happened to me. I realized that there was something much better out there and that I did not have to be defined by my circumstances. Uh, those things happened to me, but they also happened for me. I realized that had it not been for the abuse of my father, I would not have become a cop later on and gone on to help so many people. It uh, Those circumstances, as much as they did happen to me, they happened for me because they created the person 
or at least they, they contributed to the creation of the person that I became. Yeah. You know, one, one thing a lot of people, I don't think I've ever shared this on the show, but my, uh, my father was a Los Angeles police officer for 48 years and served concurrently in the military, in the Army, as a Central Intelligence uh, Division officer. I also had, had a lot of experience uh, with that growing up. I, uh, let's talk about self-sabotaging behaviors. Okay. A lot of people, you know, that come from that background, me included, have a lot, had a lot of self-sabotaging behaviors. How do we identify those, Paul, and how do we overcome uh, those, those types of behaviors? Absolutely. Well, when we take a look at the, the words self-sabotage, two words together, let's drop the self for a moment and just focus on the word sabotage. What does sabotage mean? The word sabotage means to deliberately damage, obstruct, or destroy something. If you take a look at the dictionary, the dictionary is going to tell you it is a deliberate act to damage, destroy, or obstruct something. So when we watch the news, we hear of an act of sabotage, we know that something went wrong. Somebody did something to blow something up, to damage something, to obstruct it, whatever it is. Now, let's bring the self into it. When we self-sabotage, we are doing or believing things that damage, destroy, or obstruct something. What is it damaging? What is it destroying? And what is it obstructing? It's obstructing and damaging our life, our potential, the the spirit that we are. It's preventing us from moving forward. It's a number of thoughts and different things that happen. It may be that we procrastinate. We, We start to tell ourselves, there's no way I can do this. It's too big. And the conscious mind that creates this thought, it sends a message to the unconscious mind. And and if you look at the conscious mind, it's like the captain of a ship. If the captain tells its crew, hey, we can't do this, the crew obeys the captain and does whatever it can to make sure that it does not complete the task because the captain's told them you can't do it. The same is true when we allow other people to say things that hurt us. We say, well, that really hurts. And the captain says, hey, everybody, that really hurts. And then we go into this emotion. So sabotage is a deliberate act. The important thing is that we become aware that that voice in our head, as much as it sounds like us and little buggers, they sound exactly like us, but they are not us. They are the voice of sabotage. I have given my voice a name. I remember somebody from my past and the guy kept letting me down and his name was Bob and he just kept letting, letting me down. So I, I thought, you know what? I'm going to call my saboteur the name. I'm going to give him Bob because I did not want to associate any longer with Bob. Now, I know a couple of Bob's really good people in my life, but this one was years ago, and he wasn't. So whenever Bob drops into my mind, I say, hey, you know what, Bob? I don't have time for you. Get lost. And I can do that. I can take control of my thought patterns because I become aware that I have the power to do so. And it's not enough just to tell yourself something good or to have good thoughts. You have to follow it through with action. And so I'll change my my circumstance, my environment. Hey, it's time for me to go for a walk. It's time for me to listen to a, a podcast that, that lifts me up, to go to YouTube and listen to some inspiring stuff, to do something. It's not enough for me to give in. I'm not going to give in. We're all warriors, Ken. And we all have that courage as your podcast talks so much about those voices of courage are the ones that we need to use to replace well, those voices. Let, of sabotage. let me, uh, let me, yeah, let me touch on what you just said. Cause I think you, you, uh, you really touched on something here. I also, when I was uh, in therapy years ago, um, I named my saboteur Benny. Okay. <laughs> And Benny, I, I've had a visualization of Benny. I'm sure there's a lot of great Bennies out there, man. No, 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 uh, uh, no disrespect here. But you know, this <laughs> Benny was uh, a broken nose guy. You know, a foul mouth, and uh, you know, just a mean, mean sob. And um, you know, when that Benny would drop in, right, it would, you know, I would wreak some, wreak some havoc. So 
what I did is I had a friend of mine say, hey, listen, if you ever hear Benny come out, call me on it because sometimes I'm not aware of it. I think we have to start becoming aware. And one of the things you talk about is, is mindfulness. So how does that tie into being able to identify our saboteur and then maybe be able to uh, deal with it, you know, over a period of time so we can, we can uh, release that. Uh, I got to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll answer that question. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm talking with with, uh, author Paul Nadeau and hostage negotiator and uh, former police uh, 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 officer. Uh, Paul, um, my... Mindfulness. And I, I love that. I love your ground because, you know, what's happening in, in all areas of life, people are stepping up, awakening and bringing mindful practices into the world. Let's talk about it from your point of view. What, how do we use to allow out our saboteur? You bet. And it's such a good question. I, I will, I'll give you this, that every day is a new opportunity. Every day is a new adventure. And how we start our days really makes a difference. What's your morning routine? And I talk about the the importance of having a morning routine. Now, what is a morning routine? Number one, when you wake up, you should have a spirit of gratitude. You woke up. There's so much thing. There's so many things to be grateful for. So take a moment to wake up to really take before you grab your phone, before you you start your day. Uh, We all clothe our outer bodies, but how many of us actually go into the closets of our minds to choose an attitude uh, to start our day with, an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of power, of certainty? We do this by exercising gratitude to take 30 seconds. Just say, I am so grateful I got up. I'm so grateful I have my health. I'm so grateful I have a roof over my head. I'm so grateful for the people in my life. Start off with gratitude. Then tell yourself certain things. Your mantras, your daily mantras. What is it that you want to accomplish? Who is it that you are? Paul, you're amazing. So use your name in the third person. Point at the mirror and say, Paul, you're amazing. Or Ken, you're amazing. You're fantastic. Today is going to be a great day. Today I've got it. I'm not going to let anybody get in my way. I'm not going to let anybody mess up my day because I've got this. I am amazing. You start the mantras off and, and it's energy. Bring this belief to it. And just don't look at the mirror and go, I'm amazing. Paul. You're really amazing. No, use that passion in your voice to really project it and then believe it. So start your day off with intention and remind yourself from time to time during the day, take a deep breath and say, I've got this. I've got this. I am, I am able. I am capable. I'm amazing. Whatever it is, tell yourself this. Uh, through the course of the day. And when somebody cuts in front of you, whether it's in traffic or at a Starbucks when you're waiting for your coffee, you don't let that get the best of you. You've got the best of the day because you've conditioned your mind to be ready for it. That's one exercise. I could go on to so many more, Ken. But starting your day off with intention by telling well, love, yourself these that. things. I love that a lot, Paul. And, you know, I like to Yeah, I love that actually. Just- Plus that, you know, if your day's not going well, one of the things I like to do is stop, (laughs) splash some water on my face and tell myself I'm starting my day over and I can start my day over anytime. So I love doing that. So, um, you know, positive thoughts and positive thinking is important. And sometimes the saboteur, you know, if if you allow that to, to step back into that, sometimes we have to. You know, Tony Robbins, one of my heroes who I used to work with, tell me to change your state. All you have to do is two things. You got to change your focus and your physiology, right? 
So how important is mindful uh, is uh, what I was saying. Mindfulness is very important, but positive thoughts, um, maybe of reprogramming your mind, you know, to reprogram yourself. I know we talked a little bit about this, but what are the thoughts that we should be talking or thinking of yourself? You know, I know and I heard you pat on my back. You're good, Ken. Everything's good. Any, but what, what are those thoughts we need to reprogram our thinking? Yeah, we can reprogram the neural pathways of our mind uh, by the things that we tell ourselves and by the things that we, be, we come to believe. It's not enough, as you said, Ken, to simply tell yourself these great things because you know, positive thinking is one piece of this, this equation. The other piece is that physiology that you spoke of. And I referred to it a little bit earlier, doing something different, you know, exercising. This is a great way, physical exercising, start to believe uh, in your, your potential to, to be the fittest you possibly can. And it's amazing that when we exercise our physical bodies, our emotional bodies get the exercise as well because we start to believe in ourselves, our, our full potential. So it's, it's not enough to just tell yourself these great things. You got to get the body moving. You got to get the body involved in it because it's body, mind, soul, spirit. It's all these things. They work together to make the best you. You also have to ask yourself questions from time to time. Who deserves love more than you? The answer to that is nobody. Who deserves happiness more than you? The, per, the answer to that is nobody. Everybody is born to, to be the very best they possibly can. The problem is, is that we have this potential as a child, but our, our surroundings uh, and the information coming in tends to mess that up. We're told, You're, you can do anything you want. And then a couple of years later, as we get a little bit older, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. What do you mean you've got this dream to become who you, this, this artist? No, I want you to become a doctor. And we start to listen to this, this outside noise and to allow the noise to affect our way of thinking when we should actually be standing in our own greatness and saying, no, I'm better than this. I get to choose. And, and I love the word choice. It's a six letter word. You get to choose your destiny. You get to choose what you do. And it's okay to go out there and do things and not succeed because it's not failure, it's data. Okay, that didn't work. I've got this data now. What must I do to become the person I want to be? And ask yourself questions again. If you're not living up to your full potential, I'm not the business person I want to be, or I'm not dating the person I want to date. And then you ask yourself, okay, it's time to do some self-evaluation. What must I do to bring myself to becoming that business person I want to be, to becoming that soul yeah. mate I want to be? Those are the things that you need to do. Well, listen, I, um, I, I, over the last 26 years, I've worked with many, many CEOs, CEOs and individuals that, uh, you know, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, and a lot of them come in and they, you know, their businesses are doing okay. Okay, and, or maybe in some cases, you know, they're well, but they're not doing so well because they're stressed out, they're worried, they're concerned, they uh, they react, they're in reactive mode most of the time, and they're in overwhelm. They're they're challenged in many many ways, and of course, uh, what we found out over the years is the impact impact the stress on our on our mind, right? Paul, how do you, you know, when you're working with individuals, you know, you've done hostage negotiation. You've, you've really been out there in the front line in a lot of ways. Um, how do we change, help people change their states from your point so that they can step into um, really leadership through peace of mind is what I would call it. Yeah. Yeah. What a great question as well. Uh, I used to work, as you said, as a hostage negotiator, but I also worked as a special victims unit detective. And it was my job to deal with the, uh, or, and I shouldn't say deal, but to, to speak with victims of sexual abuse or child abuse and to help them through what it, what they had gone through. 
And a lot of times we take so much on our shoulders. We blame ourselves for things that are not within our control. Uh, for example, the victim of a sexual assault. It's not their fault that they were sexually assaulted, but it is astounding how many people will take that, I should not have done this. I could have done this differently. Had I not been dressed in this way, had I not gone to that party, had I not, and it's the, had I not, or I could have, I, I, these are things that were not within their control. It's all right to go out. It's all right to mix and mingle. And a lot of people focus on the things that they can't control. Uh, they don't focus on the things that they can. So a short answer to your question, Ken, is to examine the things that you can control in your life. And I'll use COVID-19 as an example. A lot of people, when COVID-19 first came out, they were so worried about catching it. And CEOs are so worried about the bottom line. They're so worried about the outcome. Is my business going to do this? Is my business going to do that? They're focusing on something that they don't control at the moment. What do they control? At this moment, they control their actions. They control their mindset. They control how they lead. And this is how we ought to be leading our lives is by looking at the things that we can control and focusing on the moment. The future is not uh, uh, within uh, our control. Uh, the present. I, uh, I've got to take a quick bit. Uh, yeah. What I want to talk about and uh, get back is, uh, you know, it's been said that environment is stronger than a lot of people's willpower. Let's talk about the environments that people can set up that are really supportive for them, even if they're in a, um, uh, a, uh, a situation where, you know, family situations sometimes where people are just, uh, quite frankly, they, they are, you know, mentally or emotionally abusive, maybe not physically, but they're in a difficult situation. And how do we, how do we help people to maybe overcome that? So let me take a quick break. We come back. Welcome back, everybody. Talking to my great guest, Paul Nadeau. And, uh, Paul is uh, talking to us a little bit about uh, how to really change our mindsets so that we can really have more wealth in all areas of life. Paul, so let's let's talk about that uh, that piece I was talking about the uh, you know um, being in a uh, maybe a toxic environment, but uh, being able to you know navigate that. Uh, you know, some people don't really have a lot of control over their environment, especially when they're younger. Yeah, yeah, and that's very true. Uh- I'm going to start off with this. Back in the 50s, I believe it was, back in the 50s, uh, experiments were done. And and fortunately, they're not done anymore uh, in this way. But a lot of people would look at it as as not being humane. But they took dogs and they put, they would take a dog and there were two cages. And the cages were connected by a small tunnel. The dog would go into the first cage and on the on the floor there was an electrical current and it was just it, it was not comfortable so when the dogs walked in they started jumping on this electrical current which brought them some discomfort and the the people who were conducting the experiment were watching to see how the dogs would react and what they would do what the dogs didn't realize in the very beginning of course is that tunnel led to a secondary cage that didn't have an electrical current. And so if the dog started jumping in this discomfort and didn't look at the opening that was there just a short distance from them, connected to the cage, and then they didn't go to the second cage where they found relief, they would stay in that cage and keep jumping and jumping and jumping until they became acclimatized to the electrical current. And after a period of time, they would lay in the cage because this is their life. It was called learned helplessness. And regrettably, a lot of from even from my uh, childhood, I'd learned to become helpless because that was all I knew. We have to challenge our environment from time to time. How do we do that? As we grow older, uh, the great philosopher Socrates said, an unexamined life is a life not worth living. And the premise of that, the thought of that is that we have to examine our lives. And I encourage people to do this every couple of weeks. Take 
an hour or so on a weekend when you have some time to sit there and take a piece of paper and just split it in two. On the one side, you're going to you're going to write down the things that are going well. On the other side, you're going to th- you're going to write down the things that are not going well. And you're going to examine your life. You're going to take a look brutally honest. What's going well? And give yourself celebration for the things that are going well. On the other side, take a look at the things that aren't going well. I'm not happy. This relationship is bringing a lot of stress. And then take a look. Am I the cause of this? Am I the person who, you know, everybody, we we blame. A lot of people blame people. And that's another act of self-sabotage, blaming others for things that are going wrong. It's their fault that I lost the job. It's their fault that the relationship ended. It's their fault. No, look at yourself. Take a deep look. Am I happy with this? If not, what is the cause of my discomfort here? Why is this not working out? And then take action. It's not enough to be aware of what needs to change. You have to be aware of what you can do about it. One of the things, if you're a younger person and you realize that you are the victim of physical abuse, of mental abuse, is to reach out to a trusted person uh, and a person in authority, perhaps. This could be a teacher. This could be a doctor. This could be a police officer, somebody that you trust to reach out to and say, hey, I, I'm going through this and I need help. And this is a a part of our human DNA to be vulnerable and to ask for help that's okay to do. It's all right for us to reach out because we weren't born in pods. We weren't born not to, to lean on other people. Quite to the contrary, we were born to lean on one another. And when you become aware that you're being traumatized and victimized, it's okay to reach out to others for help, to a trusted person. That's great. You know, I was working with um, some of the homeless for a while, and uh, I was down in a city called Chula Vista with a lady that was just starting out her, her nonprofit, and she was on the front line helping people to uh, before they got homeless. And I asked her this question. I said, why, why, in your estimation, why do people become homeless? And she gave me an answer that I – was unique at, to me at that time because I didn't realize it. I, I thought most people were homeless because they were either uh, on drugs or alcohol or you know, had mental issues. She said, the reason that most people are homeless is that they've lost their connection. They've lost their social connections to home, to family, to friends, to church, to, you know, to education. Um, Paul, let's talk from your point of view, uh, social uh, support social structures along around mental health and mental illness. What's your take on that? Well, first of all, I'd like to to just recognize the power of the answer that you were given by this this wonderful person. It's so true. Uh, as I said, we were not born in pods. We were born to connect to one another. Our, our mothers took care of us. Our fathers took care of us. We got that, that touch that we needed. Um, hopefully, we got some support and we felt connected to a family and then to friends and then to community. It's so important. Nobody gets to their destination alone. Uh, we, when we take a look at the successes that we've had in life, there's a lot of people that helped us get there. And we have to recognize that, too. When we do lose that social connection, we've got to do everything we possibly can to get it back. But here's the thing. We have to be very careful who we connect to, because if you are surrounded by, um, if you're an apple, you're a good apple, but you happen to be in a basket of bad apples, of rotten apples, and those apples are going to affect that goodness in you. If you're surrounded by idiots, chances are that idiot environment is going to seep into you. It may be through language. It may be through actions. It may be through the the whole totality of what that is, that, that mentality, that group mentality could end up on you. We are the product of the people that we surround ourselves with. So if I'm always going 
to a group of people, my buddies, my friends are people who are foul mouthed. They're angry. They're destructive. They're this. I'm going to be influenced by my surrounding and I'm going to start to adapt those feelings because I'm going to condition myself in order to be part of the pack. We can't allow ourselves to do that. If you find yourself in a pack of bad apples, it's time to find a pack of good ones, to find a tribe that can support you, one that can teach you, one that can elevate you. And that could be through a community, uh, a, a, a church or another environment of support, or just finding people that think like you do. Artists, if you're an artist, you surround yourself with good artists, people who are positive. Because remember, garbage in, garbage out. If I'm getting a steady diet of garbage by the surroundings, I'm watching garbage on video, I'm listening to garbage on the radio, or you know, the music that I'm listening to is all about hatred and destruction and all this and all that, my mind is going to be toxic. It's going to be affected. It's going to be toxic as a result of what I'm listening to, what I'm, my environment is. I'm going to start to embody what I'm listening to, what I'm exposed to, garbage in, garbage out. So if that is you right now, it's time for you to wake up because this is your future. You get to choose. If you're happy with that, you stay where you are. I don't, I don't, I recommend it because that could end up bringing you to that homeless peace or to that peace where you feel alone or feel totally uh, abandoned or destroyed by your environment. That's not for you. You want something of support. You want something good. You want to surround yourself with people who say, I've got you and you're better. You're, 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 you're doing great, man. You know, you're with us and we're going to take care of you. So, yeah, what a great answer that was that you uh, had. And I hope that all our listeners are listening to that because yeah. we tend to judge the, the homeless people right off the bat. Yeah, we do. And we should. You know, I'm uh, uh, I'm a great fan of, of working with individuals to up level their life. Right. It doesn't really matter what level you're at. You can be. Uh, the CEO of uh, a Fortune uh, 100 company. You can be somebody just starting out in business. You can be a housewife. You can be, you know, it's we're able to realize the greatness. It's not in just some of us. It is in all of us. And one of the ways we get to that uh, is through the using the uh, using compassion. Compassion for ourselves. And Paul, I know you're a big advocate of that. So we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, I'd like to take a deep dive into some of the tools of compassion that might help my audience to step up and feel uh, more, more, cons- more love, more, more caring for themselves. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Ken Foster, the Voices of Courage show. Today we're talking with J. Paul Nadeau. And by the way, we just uh, put on the screen uh, where you can get a hold of Paul. It's at J. Paul Nadeau.com, N-A-D-E-A-U, jpaulnadeau.com. And uh, you'll want to go visit Paul's website and find out uh, all the uh, tools and uh, opportunities for you to be able to manage your mind, manage your stress, and take your life to the next level. Paul, um, compassion. Let's talk about it. It's a big, mm. it's a big subject. It's it's a wonderful subject, and yes, you alluded to uh, self love, and this is something that so many people are lacking uh, the the ability or or the just the right. I'll use the word the right. You have the right to love yourself, and regrettably, 
what happens to many of us is that we're influenced by the words and actions and behaviors of others. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt once said that nobody can hurt your feelings unless you give them permission to. And our, our society is set up in such a way that we're getting these mixed messages from people. This is the ideal body. This is the ideal thing. You are this. You are that. You are not uh, as great as you can be unless you buy this product, A, B, and C. And all these messages come in, and much of it needs to be tuned out. We need to tune out those messages. We can't listen to the naysayers or the ones who say, ideally, you have to do this or buy our product, or even listen to the negativity of of other people who tell you you're not good enough. No, all that has to come from you. And if you're listening to things that are hurting you, it's time to turn the station off. It's, it's not enough to, uh, to do it on your own without taking action. You have to. You, you can do it by turning the station, by dialing in a different station, by starting to love yourself. If you're not happy with the way that you look, how is it? Again, ask that question. What must I do to get to where I want to be? Uh, For example, physicality. If you look at yourself and you say, you know what? I'm 15 pounds overweight. I don't feel good about myself. Then you ask yourself, well, what is it that I must do? I'm going to use myself as an example. About three and a half months ago, um, I was sitting at about 165 pounds. I'm five foot eight. It was 165 pounds. And I was doing fasting, intermittent fasting, which I truly believe in. I love it. But I wasn't doing it that seriously. So I, I said to myself, okay, I want to lose this little gut that I've got. I wasn't happy with it. And so I went into doing this very seriously. Three and a half months. In that three and a half months, my and my body fat at that time was about 19% body fat. I'm going to tell you, sitting here, looking at you right in the eyes, today I am at 146 pounds from 165. I'm at 146. My body fat went from 19% to 8.3%, I think it was this morning, and it was by intermittent fasting and by exercising regularly. I exercise about five times a week and I only go for about half an hour to 45 minutes and I use resistance training. It's not impossible. Now, I asked myself the same question. What must I do to get to my goal? It's not enough to say, I want to lose weight, put a number on it. I want to use, I want to lose that 15 pounds. And then you say, what must I do? And I'm not doing this to satisfy the outside world. I'm doing that to satisfy my health, my inside self. And ask yourself those questions. Be mindful and take the action necessary to get you to where you want to be. Self-love is one of those things. By telling yourself that you're okay and that nobody has control over you or should make you feel less than you are, Because only one person ought to be doing that. That one person is you. Now, never compare yourself to others either. Because by doing so, we can really put ourselves down. That person seems to have a great life or great body, great this. No, if I'm going to compare myself to someone, I'm going to compare myself to the person I was yesterday, the person I was six months ago, because I'm no longer that person. I'm no longer that person. I have evolved and I am transitioning every day to a better me by the choices that I make. I love it. Listen, I've got one of your books up on the screen and um, we've got exactly two minutes. <laughs> so can you uh, uh, tell the audience real quick a little bit about um, uh, when they read the book, uh, uh, what uh, they'll walk away with? Yeah, Damn It, Just Ask is really, the title says it all. A lot of people don't ask for what they want. And I attribute that to three F's. It's fear, fear of being rejected, forgetfulness, not thinking to ask, or familiarity, not knowing how to ask. Now, I'm a professional negotiator. 
But we all negotiate in life. We negotiate every day in life and in business. A negotiation is simply trying to reach a yes. And so if we're trying to reach a yes with someone, where do we go for dinner? Well, I'd like to go here. I'd like to go there. Uh, What do we want to do? Uh, Whatever it is, it's a negotiation with your kids to get them to eat, to get them to go to bed. It's a negotiation. Learn how to do it well through the eyes and experiences of a hostage negotiator. And that's what that book is about. It's about understanding how to ask for what you want in life because you're entitled. You just have to know how to do it and you have to do it more often. Wayne Gretzky, famous Canadian hockey player, said you always miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And a lot of times it's because we're afraid of taking them. We're afraid of asking for what is our right to ask for. And that book will teach you how to do it. And it will remind you that you can. All right. Well, damn it. Just ask. You can get that on Amazon or where other books are sold. Is that accurate, Paul? Well, it, it's uh, it's primarily on Amazon a, Amazon at the moment, so that's where you can get it on Amazon, and it's it's really a good book. It's really changing a lot of people's uh, approaches on how to negotiate and ask for the, what they want in life. Well, Paul, I'm out of time, my friend. I want to thank you so much for being here today, and uh, really enlightening my audience. Uh, you you really have a different take on a lot of. Uh, areas that we talked about. So really appreciate you and and thank you for all you do. Thank you, Ken. So for all of you that have joined us today, I want to thank you for being on the Voices of Courage show. Please tell your family, your friends, your associates about this show. That's how we grow. And from my heart to yours, I pray that you continue to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. Till next time. Mm -hmm.